afternoon, folks. Big Bo with RVs with Big Bo at Parkway RV Center. Haven't done a Class C in a minute or two, so thought I'd do one today. We just got this one in the other day, and um, really cool one I thought I'd share with y'all today. This is the 2018 Winnebago Mini Winnie. Y'all know I'm a big Winnebago fan, um, especially even in the later model ones because in these newer RVs, to me, probably one of the best built class c in the modern era you can buy is a winnebago and this is like i said 1826a a really cool floor plan because this is a 27 feet one inch long so i consider this a medium sized class c not with just one not with just two slide outs but count them guys three slide outs in a 27 foot class c motorhome so as far as maximizing interior space in a in a medium sized class c motorhome this is it right here guys ton of space and and you talk about a nice one this one only has eleven thousand five hundred miles on it 55 hours on the generator and the only way you're gonna get one nicer than this one is buy a brand new one uh about 130 135 grand brand new and, and then you got fees and upsells on top of that that's going to drive the price up even more beautiful one guys got the 4kw on and generator running right now powering everything inside really nice a little dirty i gotta have them wash the awning but got a nice power awning works great um, you can see the propane tank It wouldn't surprise me if it still had the uh, initial tank of propane in it that was in it when it was sold new. Got a good shine to it. Of course, it's a Winnebago product, guys. Very high end. It does have a one-piece fiberglass roof, which is one of the few modern motorhomes in a Class C with a fiberglass roof. Doesn't have a ton of outside storage because of all the slide outs. But, uh, you know, it's, it's got enough certainly to do the job. I mean, like I said, just wherever, I guess wherever they can put it <laughs> is the best way to describe it. I mean, they don't have the huge pass-through storage because they got to have space for the slide outs to come in and out. But definitely get the job done. It does have a rear slide out, which gives you a longer motor home when you're parked than when you're towing or when you're driving. So you're 27 feet when driving, you're about 30 feet long set up. So uh, pretty nice. It does have a trailer hitch with a 7,500 pound tow capacity. Now guys, I'm not a big fan of putting that much weight behind an E450 chassis. I mean, you certainly can if you want to at your motor home. Me personally, I would probably say 5,500, 6,000 pounds to be safe. Um, so you're not straightening its guts out. Does have the 6.8 liter Triton V10, 305 horsepower, 420 pound feet of torque. So we're gonna drive it later in the video, of course. And I'll show you what everything looks like with the slide out rooms in. Generator just a humming away like it's supposed to. Tires look great. There's of course your, your black water tank. Does have the sewer flush. Does have the slide toppers on all three slide outs. I like the fact they got both slide outs on one side and one on the back. So it allows you to get into a little bit more narrow spot, which is a handy thing to have in, in, uh, you know, in, in your smaller, tighter parks. Perfect for state parks, older campgrounds. Notice the overlapping cap on the cab over. That's a sign of a well-built Class C motorhome because you don't have a window in the front that can leak. Keep in mind when you're driving down the road 65, 70 miles an hour, this right here is bouncing and flexing, so you don't want any straight edges like a, right here, like a seam right here. That's where most of the Class C's are gonna leak. The fact it's got an overlapping cap is a sign of a well-built Class C. You got a couple of side windows, but that's no big deal. The main thing is no front window. Of course, like I said, 40, 450 chassis, good wide wheelbase. You're not going to get beat up, uh, get swayed around, going around with trucks going around you or you going around trucks. Um, good looking grill. I mean, it's, 
I mean, it's everything you'd expect it to be. It's got one little fault in it. I'll show you when we go inside that we're going to fix. But other than that, guys, like I said, it's, I mean, for those of you who want to buy, spend double this price on a brand new one. Why? <laughs> when you can buy something like this for $67.9. Hang on one second, I'm gonna pop a drone up, show you the roof, which looks just as good as out here. Hang on one second. As you can see guys, uh, good looking roof. Let's look inside. As we step inside, of course, the interior inside matches the exterior. I mean, for you gotta keep in mind this thing's 27 feet long, so it's not 31, 32 feet like a lot of the class C's I film. And uh, no smoker pet odors. Excuse me, guys. I misquoted the hour. 66 hours on generator. I thought it was 55. It was 65. Still nothing. Uh, TV works great. Antenna. Now, that's probably going to cut off when I crank the motor. I'll go ahead and do that real quick. You can see the seats look pretty much brand new. I mean, they've got less than 12,000 uh, miles on them. So, obviously, crank it up. I have to turn that uh, motor off for the TV to work. Actually, I'm mistaken, guys. Usually the uh, TV, when you crank the motor up, will cut off because it's a safety feature so you don't get distracted by the TV playing while you're driving. So obviously the previous owners bypass that. A lot of them do that. But you can see, guys, 11,584 miles, no check engine lights, no warning lights. Uh, it does have a backup camera. It works great. I used it earlier when I brought it out of the spot. Uh, it's Bluetooth, and of course, you can hook up your uh, navigation and all that through your stereo and your Bluetooth on your phone. Dash Air is ice cold, tilt cruise. You've got all the goodies up here. Power windows, power locks, and uh, somebody's got a remote control for the stereo. Velcro taped right there, so I guess that's a pretty good convenient spot. Windshield looks good, dash looks good, so. And we are gonna drive it later in the video. Do have a flat screen TV on a swivel mount. It's just on antenna, got a, a DVD player. You can scoot this out of the way and position it wherever it's comfortable for you. You can tell it's not been used much. It's really stiff. You've got your bed up here and fold this down. And this makes a bed. And there's your ladder. And this is actually a full-size, almost queen-size bed. Bigger than a full. Not quite as big as a queen. I think a queen 60 inches wide. This is 57 inches wide. So you have to use queen-size sheets. It's just going to be a little bit looser, but perfectly fine. does have a 15,000 BTU ducted roof air that's on right now. Uh, blowing icicles. And you can open and close these vents as needed. Uh, it does have a large table booth that will also make a bed so you can sleep six in here total and uh, does have the foot rest that fold out and the logic behind that is um i've got one out one in so just for demonstration purposes which i'll be happy to demonstrate you can sit here put your leg prop your leg up it's almost like being in a recliner and of course the tvs i pushed it in but if the tv was out I'd have a great view of the television. I could stretch out almost like being in a recliner. Very, very comfortable. Well, maybe not as comfortable as a recliner, but a whole lot more comfortable than just a regular table booth. <laughs> and of course this table is removable. If you wanted to leave the table uh, down or put it in a different position, you can put it this way. If you wish to, or uh, the other way or you can leave it off completely and use this for a sofa and it does make a bed you have to have the table to make the bed you know winnebago guys i've owned two winnebagos i had a class c and a class a 
Uh, Winnebago was the first manufacturer to build their own frames in-house. That means the frames, um, I'm talking about everything from the chassis up. The cage frame, the metal aluminum frame, is designed and built by Winnebago for this particular motorhome where everybody else, or almost everybody else, uh, buys aftermarket frames. So you might have, say, a Fleetwood Fiesta and a Coachman Murata, and they'll have the exact same frame on it. And how does that benefit you as a potential buyer? Well, that just means that you have a better fit and finish, less sway, a more rigid frame. The frame is designed <coughs> for a 26A 2018 Mini Winnie and nothing else. Now, Winnebago also builds 80% of their own parts in house. They build their own aluminum parts, their own plastic parts, their own furniture. Again, guys, this way the motor home, the parts are designed, are built for the motor home design instead of the motor home being designed for aftermarket off the shelf parts like everybody else's are. So, uh, and also the added benefit of that is you can get parts for your Winnebago even when it's several years old, even when they're a couple of decades old, where other brands, if they, after they get more than a few years old, you can get parts from the factory. Winnebago, you can go to winnebagoparts.com. You can give them a call. You can order directly from them. You don't have to go through a dealership where they mark it up and sell it to you. Now, it takes a little while to get them in the part shortage, especially if they actually have to build the part that they don't have it in stock, but they keep the templates for the parts in stock for decades. Uh, matter of fact, um, you know, when I was talking to our rep from, from Winnebago Parts, they have templates all the way back to Winnebago's from the late 60s. That gives you an idea. Now, does that mean they have every little part on this RV? No, but uh, they, like I said, 80% of the parts on this RV are built by Winnebago, not uh, put together from aftermarket parts like everybody else. You know, when I took the Winnebago tour many, many years ago, something the tour guide told me that's always stuck with me of course, I know he was just trying to sell Winnebago's, but, or make them look good, uh, is that Winnebago actually builds motorhomes. They don't just build, they just don't put them together like everybody else does, or just assembles them like everybody else was. They actually build them. So, um, anyway. And, you know, I've always been a big Winnebago fan. I owned one for many years, and um, and I, I would own another one when my situation changes. But the fiberglass roof, the fact they build their own parts, and the fact they still make a decent motorhome. You know, a lot of these newer motorhomes, let's be honest, yeah, they have more technology, but they don't have the build quality of the older ones. And this is kind of one of the more or less exceptions i guess and i'm sure these in some ways may not be built as well as like they were maybe 10 15 years ago but they're still built better than most of the other brands in the modern era you know you don't have the flaking furniture problem i have seen them in some winnebago's but not a lot this one obviously doesn't have that problem um ceiling panels look great you got a six foot 10 inch tall interior ceiling height and you can see guys i mean the whole motorhome looks like an 11,500 mile motorhome look at the stove top the oven i mean this thing is just hasn't been used um i mean it's been used but it's not been used very much look at the refrigerator guys look at the racks it's not scratched up it's not beat up uh refrigerator's already getting cold and this is a eight cubic feet, maybe? Yep, it's an 821. So it's an eight cubic foot RV refrigerator. It runs off propane or electric. Um, all the cabinets built by Winnebago. Slide out storage. So, and I know guys, when you add a lot of slide outs in a smaller motor home like this, you are going to lose some storage that's that's no i mean that's no secret i mean you're kind of limited on what you can put when you have a moving wall there's all your books and manuals by the way i forgot to lay those out hey we got them 
looks like plenty of them but um you do have a solid siding door right here if you want to cut off the bedroom area and bathroom area from the rest of the rv for privacy we're gonna go to the back bedroom and the bedroom area and this is a queen bed and uh of course guys this is on a slide out so this is the downside to this floor plan when this slide out is in you cannot use this bed it sucks i know but you still got your overhead bed and you still got your uh, table bed that you can use if you need to now i wouldn't go down the road with this slide out but you can't this is the one defect d d uh, or oopsie that this unit has and somebody i don't know what they've done they've broken this mirror i am going to get my glass guy to fix this it may be a few days but we'll put a new piece of glass in there for you a new piece of mirror uh, i do have a closet in the slide out uh, this is just some additional cushions that you will need um, for a couple of things and they got a couple of your screens out for some reason these are just a, these these right here go on your front seats for when they swivel around to bring them up so when you sit on them uh more comfortable to sit down uh, and be level with the floor uh, and then you got additional cushion that you'll need when you uh, make your table booth bed uh, into a mattress because when you put that table booth down you're going to have a spot that the current cushions will not cover to finish your mattress and that's what those extra cushions are for bathrooms a split bath like pretty much every class c and glass in shower looks good skylight looks good and over here is your water closet rv toilet sink is that plastic or porcelain p or p that's plastic surprisingly they didn't put a porcelain toilet but um you know that's something if you need to add to it you can or put in later on that's up to you i think that's a pretty much a necessity if you're a bigger person like me but uh some people do some people don't wow and guys this unit is $67,900. That's not a typo. It's not a misprint. I'm going to pause the video for a second. I want to show you what current NADA retail value is. And guys, I know NADA is not everything. See, I use a two-step process when I value an RV. I look, of course, NADA, which I know isn't really market value. NADA is pretty much loan value, what banks will loan on it. Um... It doesn't tell me what they're bringing. I know everybody's like, you know, how do you appraise RVs? How do you appraise RVs? And, and of course, an appraisal is always just going to be an opinion or a guess, no matter how you do it. Nobody has. There's no direct scientific method. Every dealer, every individual has their own way of evaluating an RV or a car or a house or anything like that. I mean, you know, like a house, for example, you send two different appraisals, uh, appraisers out to the same house on the same day they're going to get come back with two different numbers because all an appraisal is is a, is is a guess but the way i do it and this may make sense to some may not make sense to other i use two different tools i use nadaguides.com of course and i look up current nada value and i don't go with options because most options are standard on rvs and it, it really irks me when when i see people they they post an nada on their ad for sale and they post two pages of options that are all standard equipment. Okay, in 2018, you couldn't buy this motorhome without an air conditioner. Three slide outs is standard equipment. It was sold with three slide outs. You could not buy a 26A brand new without the slide outs or without a refrigerator or without a microwave or without an awning or without a heater or without a stovetop or an oven. You don't add for that stuff when it's part of the base price because that's all base equipment. 
Um, so just to keep it fair, I don't believe that you should add, and, I, and I've actually talked to NADA about this too, and they, and they actually agree with me. You should not add for any additional options. So all I do on NADA is I add for the base price and adjust for the mileage. That's it. And I'm gonna flash that up real quick. Let me pause the video. Okay guys, so you can see NADA average retail $78,003. And that's just part of what we use to evaluate because we you know we want to make sure um, to um, that we're good on all that. So another thing that we do guys is RV Trader is pretty much the undisputed king of RV advertising. You know, if you've got an RV for sale, a dealer or for sale by owner, that's what nationwide that's what pretty much everybody advertises on there's over 200,000 new and used rvs for sale on rv trader and they have a price checker tool that i use multiple times a day that i use for trade-ins that i use for my rvs when we put them up for sale i want to make sure that if we're not the lowest price one with they're right there with them and generally we are the lowest price one now sometimes we can't always match it but at the same time there may be a reason why they're the lowest priced one and um, so I used my RV price checker tool and I ran it on this. And this must be a pretty popular floor plan because in any year models, there, out of 200 plus thousand RVs listed on there, there's only four 26A Winnebago uh, mini weenies on there. And I, and, you know, I'm gonna do something I've never done before. Usually I cover up the name of the dealership, but, but I got to thinking about this, talking to a buddy of mine that's, uh, that, that's a lawyer and he was saying that as long as it's public information he's pretty sure that I can show it on my video and if it's RV Trader it's public information it's listed on the internet so uh, four of these for sale 26 A's and keep in mind mine again 18 model 11,500 miles 67.9 okay uh, no price listed so we're going to ignore that one 1926 A here is a 17 model with 27,000 miles in Florida. I'm not going to mention the name of the RV dealership, but you can see it. 67,994, which is about the same price as this, but a year old. Keep in mind, guys, unlike us, you can't walk in there with a cashier's check and buy it for that. They're going to add fees. They're going to add upsells. That can add several thousand dollars, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars, ten thousand, twelve thousand dollars more to that price. So, just because you see it, there's a big difference between the advertised price and the out the door price. This is what makes us different from most other dealers out there. We have no fees, we have no upsells. We do have to add applicable sales tax, but what I'm getting at guys is that, it, let me put this scenario to you. If you're bringing your own money, let's just say you've got 67.9 in the bank, you can bring me a cashier's check or set up a wire transfer and you're, and you're coming from out of state, you're not financing it. In that scenario, since you're going to pay your sales tax when you title it in your home state, you bring me 67.9, you bought this camper out the door, and you'll just pay your sales tax when you tag and title this RV in your home state, whatever your state sales tax is. Now, if you finance it, depending on the lender you get approved through, we may have to collect estimated sales tax for your state. And if you're a Georgia resident, it's 67.9 plus applicable sales tax. We have to charge you sales tax in Georgia or TAVT tax is what they call it in Georgia. And we have to charge you 50 to to $100 highway impact fee and a 40 to $50 tag and title fee for Georgia buyers only. It doesn't matter if you pay cash or if you finance. If you're a Georgia resident, we do have to charge that. So, but we have no fees, no upsells, upsells or extended warranties, gap insurance, uh, tire and wheel packages, vacation packages, everything they try to sell you that's not worth the paper it's written on, guys. We have none of that. 67.9 so that there's pretty close but a year older and it's got more than double the miles all right here's a 16 model in arizona 67.9 same price no miles that irks me because they they went to the trouble to take about 50 pictures and whoever did their advertising should be ashamed because it's nowhere on the ad how many miles are on their coach i had to screenshot a picture of the dash and zoom in to see that it had 46,000 miles on it. Nobody should have to go through that much trouble. Whoever does their advertising, that's pure laziness right there. And I'm just speaking for somebody 
that does this for a living has been doing it for many years i would never do that seven things if you're going to list an rv online seven things that are crucial that if you can't list these seven things on the ad you don't need to list it at all seven things year make model model number price condition and miles if you can't list those seven things don't even put it on there if you can't put those seven things in the ad because you're wasting everybody's time here's an 18 model same as this 35,000 miles 74 9 and then of course these are just other Winnebago's so wow used 31k for 109 a used 22 with 10,000 miles <laughs> Of course, that's a different floor plan. But, um, guys, I've got this one for 67.9 plus applicable sales tax. Includes our major systems inspection. This is how we keep our prices so low, too, guys. Of course, you know, we keep them so low because we've been in business for over half a century. We've been in business since 1968. Everything we own is paid for. We don't owe anybody anything. We don't floor plan anything, so we don't. Uh, that's less cost that we have to operate we keep our overhead low because we just do a major systems inspection so we don't have to hire a bunch of rv techs to do all these crazy inspections we just cover the major stuff we leave the little stuff to you which so far the only thing that i've seen minor on this thing needs to be repaired is that mirror and then we're going to take care of that um but the major systems that we inspect and repair if needed for the price you pay which is 67.9 is we check the slide outs make sure they work they're all in good shape uh, this is all done after purchase we check the plumbing systems make sure they all work there's no plumbing leaks make sure the water heater works that hot water gets everywhere it's supposed to be uh, that's included uh, make sure all your faucet spigot toilet and all that stuff works make sure the refrigerator freezer gets to operating temperature on propane and electric make sure your roof air conditioner gets to operating temperature which it does we check the drivability of it, make sure it drives good, shifts good, brakes good, all that stuff, which we're going to drive it later in the video. Uh, we check the steps, which there's no steps on this because it's got the low step well. Um, and uh, that's it. Because that's your major stuff. The minor stuff, you know, if let's just say a light didn't work. Well, we're going to sell it with that. Or let's just say, which so far all the lights work. Or let's just say that drawer right there didn't work or was off track. You'll have to you'll have to fix that. We leave the Mickey Mouse stuff because you see, techs can spend more time on Mickey Mouse stuff than we do on fixing the major stuff. So we let the uh, new owners fix the little stuff, the little stuff that will not affect you using the camper and the little stuff that will not ruin your camping trip. Oh, we also check the generator, make sure it runs and puts out correctly, which obviously it does, I got it running so anyway so please guys we don't guarantee everything to work no dealer does they don't even guarantee everything to work on a brand new one you think new warranties now cover everything on a new rv you're wrong they don't don't believe me get on youtube and look how many people get new warranty claims denied and look at of course then then you can also look and see how many people get denied claims that that post reviews on uh, used on aftermarket warranties and you'll see why i never recommend buying an aftermarket warranty total waste of money all you're doing is just giving the dealership additional profit because like any and all up sales everything's marked up four times dealer cost that's why i do not recommend ever buying an upsell guys all that is just a way for them to make more profit and overcharge you by thousands i've seen upsells take a seventy-five thousand dollar a motorhome price for 75 grand it turned into a hundred thousand dollar motorhome because of upsells. If a dealership charges you more to bring your own money or to go to your own bank, or if they offer you a rebate to go through their finance department versus bringing your own money or going to your own bank, which is the exact same thing, guys. A rebate and charging you more to bring your own money is no difference. Then find another dealer because banks and lenders do not give dealers and do not give consumers rebates to go through that uh particular lender guys that that that's false they do not give rebates 
all the dealers are doing is they make a huge amount of profit when you go through their finance department. They get you approved at a certain rate and then they mark it up two or three percent or more or whatever they think they can get away with or two or three points, costing you thousands of dollars in higher payments over the life of an RV loan. It may only be 20, 25 bucks a month more in your payment that you don't even know about because they're the middleman. That's who you're going through on the financing. You're not talking directly to the lender. You're going through their finance department, their finance manager. He or she is marking that rate up as much as they can get you to pay. That's why, guys, when, you, when you're buying a new RV and the dealership gets you fixated on payment amount instead of how much you're financing, best thing you can do is get up and leave because never get fixated on payment. Concentrate on how much you're financing, how much everything's costing you dollar amount, not payment amount, because they can stretch payments out and stretch terms out to get your payment about down to whatever, you know, within reason. But that's how they get you. That's how you turn a 67.9 motorhome and you call the bank the next day, you owe six figures on it. <laughs> that's how they get you. Here, guys, we keep things easy, simple, and done. No upsells, no fees. 67.9, haggle-free firm, and uh, plus applicable sales tax. That's it. No upsells, no fees. You know, if you decide a year from now that, you know, you bought this thing $10,000 back a book, first of all. A year from now, if you decide that, hey, you know, I like this one. I like RV, but I, I, I want a different motorhome on something bigger, smaller. I want a Class A, a Class B, a travel trailer, fifth wheel, whatever. You know that you can sell it or trade it and not be buried in it. The bad thing is you go to these other dealerships and they talk you into all those upsells and all those fees. You'll be one of the thousands of RVers that, ha that own RVs that they don't want anymore because their needs changed or they want a different type. But they can't do nothing with it because they owe too much and they don't have the money to get their payoff down there to what, to what it's worth. So many people now, guys, and I see it every single week, and that's why I rated so much about it the other day on that last fifth wheel video. I had some folks in that owed $25,000 more on their RV than the retail value because they were a first-time RV buyer when they went to a big corporate greedy RV dealership, Rip Off World, and they stuck it to them, guys. I mean, it was pathetic, and I felt so sorry for those people. They weren't mad at me because they had no idea until a year after they bought it that they were so stuck in it because, again, they got fixated on payment amount like everybody else does, especially first-time shoppers. And guys, if you're a first-time shopper, and, and I'm giving you this advice personally, not from Parkway, but stay away from corporate dealerships. That's the absolute worst thing you can do. And I'm not saying you have to buy from us, but go to an independent RV dealership, guys, a mom and pop dealer that has been around a while. And, you know, let don't, don't get taken advantage of you know, don't be afraid to ask questions, take pictures of everything, carry a calculator, take notes, write down numbers, get a dollar amount for everything, and just be smart about it. If at any time something feels like you're getting taken advantage of, don't be afraid to get up and leave. There's too many other dealerships out there, too many RVs for sale out there to be married to just one. Don't be afraid to say no, in other words. And I'm one of those kind of people that I, I'm, a, I'm a trustworthy person by nature. But the second I see somebody trying to take advantage of me, I don't give them a second chance. You try to take advantage of me, then, and then I'm, I'm sorry, we're done. And I'm the same way with that, even with people who try business here that try to trade in stuff and I catch them in a lie. And I've made people mad, but I don't, I don't give second chances. I don't care how bad I need to sell a particular RV or, or what. You know, that's just the way I am. I'm, I give trust, but you, you, you abuse it, then, then I'm not, I'm done. Because be, uh, trust between us and a customer goes two ways. It's a two-way street. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Um, you know, we, we've sent customers to buy or, or sent our drivers to buy RVs from, for sale by owners and they get down there in totally condition. 
uh, and and I've had the whole uh, you know I, I've sent here wasn't that long ago I had a really nice beaver motor home I was going to buy tag axle been buying to buy it for months saw pictures beautiful RV from what they sent me and I sent the driver down there to get it, it was a hunk of junk and of course they tried oh let me let, let's talk about the price let me drop the price to make up for it I don't care if you gave the thing to me at that point when you lose my trust I don't want it at any cost it's not a money thing at that point it's a principle and um and that's what i told the guy I, said, I wouldn't do business with you if you paid me to take it i wouldn't do business with you just because of principle so uh keep that in mind guys and i'm, I'm a firm believer what goes around comes around anyway i'm gonna pause the video for a minute guys and uh bring the rooms in show you what it looks like with the slide outs in we'll take it for a test drive and uh, again, guys, if, if you got any questions about this motorhome, give one of my salespeople a call at 706-965-7929. Again, guys, we only cover the major systems inspection, so you need to, and this should be common sense on any RV you buy. You need to come down, look at the RV for yourself first, inspect it for yourself, make sure it's nice enough to meet your standards for an RV for you and your family to use. Um, you need you know look over everything yourself see what works what doesn't beyond what we check out and um, I high and or and this is one step I highly recommend that everybody needs to do I'm probably the only dealer in the ship in the country that recommends this before you buy any new or used RV guys get a third-party RV inspector to look at it cost you a few hundred dollars yes you'd be crazy to buy one without it even a brand spanking new one and if a dealership or for sale by owner won't allow you and I don't care what excuse they give you why they won't then again like I was saying earlier there's too many other ones out there for sale walk away because they're hiding something I don't care what if a dealer tells you we don't allow RV inspectors for whatever reason walk away because I don't care if they say oh we got our own takes to do that it doesn't matter you need an independent third party non-biased inspector that's trained that knows how to look at these things that's not affiliated with the dealership that's not affiliated with you beyond the fact that you're paying them uh, to look at this RV on your behalf and a real RV inspector will never tell you to buy it or not buy it they'll just make you a list of everything that works and doesn't work so you know what's up now if you do get an inspection guys we only for the price we sell them for we only fix the major systems that I mentioned earlier so we don't fix anything else so it doesn't matter what the RV inspector says that's purely for your benefit so you know that hey i'm gonna have to fix a few little things on this thing i probably fix in a weekend no big deal or hey this thing's got more stuff than i know than i know how to fix on it or, or that i want to fix on it even though it's the lowest price one in the country by many thousands of dollars um you know any rv you buy you're going to work on whether it's new used whether it's uh it doesn't matter the type doesn't matter the name brand doesn't matter how much it was you can spend $5 million on the best RV ever built and you're going to work on it because that's just the nature. You've got this many systems working together. Um, and along that way, there's going to be occasional breakdowns, uh, not really breakdowns, but there's going to be occasional repairs in the system or one component's not going to work and it's going to affect other components not working. Um, I've seen people say that their RV needed two or three thousand dollars worth of work and it boiled down to a 50 cents fuse being blown <laughs> i mean because because that one component kept the other components from working and they didn't have the right person look at it that told them what it really needed <laughs> and uh you know and that's just because you got all these different systems working together it's like it's just like a boat you know ask anybody that's ever owned a houseboat or a cruiser or even a yacht You've got a lot of different systems working together to make an RV work. So, yeah, there are going to be occasions you're going to have to spend to work on it or work on it yourself, which is essential skills that you know any RV owner should be able to at least know how to do basic repairs. And you'll know how to do most of the, a lot of basic repairs just from owning a house. So anyway, if you've got questions about this motorhome, again, 706-965-7929. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you right back uh, after I get these slide outs in. All right, everybody. I got everything slid in and my personal checklist. Everybody's got their own version of this, but 
I always like to go outside, of course, put my awning up and make sure all my outside bays are closed, latched, and locked. And um, make sure everything's clear on the inside for you bring the rooms in. If your unit does not have slide toppers and you were parked under a bunch of trees, make sure you don't have any limbs and debris and stuff like that on top of it. If you do, hit it with a broom or a leaf blower for you bring the slide out in so you don't damage your seal. On this particular one, you want to come inside. Of course, make sure your front seat's clear of the slide out area. Uh, bring your, turn your ignition switch on on this one with the parking brake set, a little different. Uh, ignition switch on, parking brake set. And you can see guys, a little bit different. Let me go ahead and lay this stuff down here. You want to make sure everything's put down that can slide off when you're driving. Um, you can still walk through here pretty good. You still got access to everything in your kitchen, your fridge, uh, cabinet, stuff like that. Full access to the bathroom. Your main slide out switch is right up here. And bring it all the way in till it stops. You, like with any slide out system, you bring them all the way in or all the way out so that slide out seal can connect. Then once you do that, you come in here. You have to do these in order. Bring your driver side rear slide out first and that's this one right here with the closet bring it all the way in then fold your mattress over it's got a uh, fold in the mattress you just plop it right over and um, bring this in till it comes all the way in where it connects once you do that you're done so uh, and you can see guys you do lose your bed back here but you can still get to pretty much almost everything else so hang tight guys, I will be right back. Let me get a driver and we'll, uh, or somebody ride with me and we'll, uh, uh, we'll take it for a test drive. We'll see you in just a second from the driver's seat. All right, everybody. Now we're gonna test drive this 2018 Mini Winnie and see how it does. Got my good buddy Shane behind the camera and show him some love. If you got any interest in this motorhome, give him a call or a text. Shane, what's your number? It's 423-347-8478. You can call and text anytime. Be glad to help you out on this one. Let's take it down the road, 11,584 miles. Heck, it's wore out, ain't it? <laughs> Got a blind. Forgot to put that blind up, metal blind, to make it a little bit of racket. Be all right. Take this little guy out, see what it can do. I've been driving so many big class A's, I feel like I'm in a minivan now lately. I'm driving these A's. Leaves are changing colors, shoot, you can't beat it. We can take off going up this hill, see what it can do, which I'm sure it'll be plenty. You'd be surprised how much power these Class C's have. This thing is, in fact, I'm gonna cut it off. That darn dash here about too cold. <laughs> All I like about it with these slide outs in, you won't believe how much smaller this RV is from the outside. It's a, like I said, 27 feet long. That's an easy size to drive, to handle, to park, get around town in. Um, I mean, you drive a F-150 four-door truck, you're 20 feet long, so it isn't that much bigger. Of course, we're at the world's longest red light, I guess. Like always. There we go. have the torque shift transmission of course 
shift smooth. Take her up the interstate, see what it can do getting on the ramp, try the cruise control out. You can tell this thing doesn't have any miles on it. This steering is good and tight. smooth. I got a stove top cover rattling in the background. I usually fold those up before I go on a drive. I guess I'm losing my touch. Yeah, these tires are nice and smooth. I mean, this is a, man, it's a nice motorhome. This thing drives really nice. Try to go around them. I got to get off here in a minute. But... this one. <laughs> we'll hit the brakes here, see what it does. Brake smooth, not pulling. Oh yeah. Besides that stove, uh, top cover back there rattling uh <laughs> it's a nice one i promise you you'll love the way this one drives uh, if you're interested in don't take my word for it come out and look at it for yourself of course test drive it if you're interested in this coach give shane a call or a text shane what's your number it's 423-347-8478 smash us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button comment share on social media thanks again for riding along with us and look forward to seeing you here in beautiful ringo georgia